Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today we're making a little envelope pocket mini album. I'm using a envelope die from Marianne Designs. It has a scallop top, and it also comes with a little tag insert. Cut at Home has lots of Marianne Design dies. I'll put a link in the description box so you can stop by and check them out. I'm cutting six of them, and I'm just running them through on some white cardstock through my Sizzix Big Shop machine. I'm pulling out my stylus tool from the Heartfelt Creations Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit. And I'm going to add score marks to both the sides and the bottom of the mini album. And I'm doing that to all six of the envelopes. And here's what a finished envelope looks like. I love the scallop top to it. So now I'm just folding along those crease marks and adding a little bit of Scotch Quick Dry and adhering them together. For the hinge that I'm gluing each pocket to, I'm using the concept from Laura Dennison Stack the Deck binding system and I cut three pieces of paper and have glued them together. What, how I got my measurements is I measured the height of my pocket, which is close to two and a quarter, but you don't want it the same length as your pocket or the same height as your pocket. So I did mine at two and one sixteenth. That way it's a little bit shorter than my pocket. So I cut three pieces, one of them at two and one sixteenth by two and a half, another piece at two and one sixteenth by two, and a third piece at two and one sixteenth by one and a half. I just drop the measurements one half inch increments each time. So you can make as many as you want. You can make the book as large as you want. Just keep dropping them by one and a half, or I guess I should say you want to go up by one and a half if you want a larger book. Then what I did is I put the piece of paper in my scoreboard, I used my Martha Stewart scoreboard. I have a little bit fast play of video of how I did this, so you'll be able to see that. And I used my Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit from Heartfelt Creations and my stylus. I scored it at 5 8 inch, turned it completely around 180 degrees, and scored it at 5 8 of an inch. I did that with all three pieces. Scored it 5 8 flipped it around 5 8 Then, once you have your binding piece, you just simply glue them on top of each other, small, medium to large. And again, you'll be able to see that in the video. So I just kind of wanted to catch you up with what I did so far. And what I will be doing is using some Angel Craft double-sided adhesive. It's a strong adhesive, and I will be adhering my pockets to each page. So I will record it as I go, but I do want to let you know um, I will be measuring out my book and making little chipboard front and back covers. So I'll put the measurements up on the screen and also at Cut It Home's blog so you can follow step by step if you would like for all these measurements. But I will make my book a little bit, probably about a quarter inch wider and taller. So I hope you stay tuned and follow along. Please check out Cut It Home's blog and I'll have all the details on there. So to make the hinge, I'm cutting out three pieces of paper. I'm using the Laura Denison's. I know I've explained a little bit of this in the video, but I'm using Laura Denison's Stack the Deck binding system, and I'm cutting three pieces at two and one sixteenth, and then the three pieces are two and a half, two, and one and a half. And this is going to give me six hinges for my six envelope pockets. So I'm just adding my score marks. I'm adding them at 5 eighths of an inch, flipping it all the way around, and again, 5 eighths of an inch. I screwed up one of my measurements here, so I'm just cutting out, um, I believe it was the two and a half at this point, or maybe the, yeah, two and a half. So I'm just scoring that as well. And then normally I use a heavy um, double-sided adhesive to glue these together to each other, but being that this is so tiny, I'm just using a little bit of wet glue and it worked out great. I'm adding it just to the binding and then eyeballing it to glue it together. 
And now I should have added tape to the very back of my binding system, but I forgot, which I'll add it here in just a moment. So now I'm adding some Angel Craft tape. You want to add it, you want to use a strong adhesive, and I'm only adding it to one side of each of those flanges because on the other side we'll be adding decorative paper. So we will add our tape or glue at that point. So I'm just kind of lining it up and adhering it down. Again, removing the tape backing and trying to make sure that all the pockets line up as well. So I did this with all six pieces. And now here is where I, um, Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm picking out pattern paper at first. I'm going to make the cover of my little mini album. So I'm deciding on a piece of pattern paper. So my chipboard covers are two and three eighths inch tall by two and three quarters. So I decided I needed an eight by three and five eighth inch piece of pattern paper, which will wrap around my covers and my spine. I wanted to leave about an, a half inch on both the top and then another half inch on the bottom to be able to wrap around it. So this is something you don't have to do, but I am find, finding the center of my spine and the center of my paper, and that way it makes it easy for me to line up when I glue it down. Again, using some wet adhesive. I normally, on a regular mini album, would use double-sided tape, but this is just a little tiny, so the wet glue works perfectly. So you want to make sure that's really adhered down and then I'm lightly folding over my paper to get it ready to wrap around and I'm just leaving an eighth inch on those corners before I miter them off to avoid some bulk. And as you can see I'm adding tape around the entire perimeter of the paper, cutting that off and now I will remove the tape backing, press down both my long sides first tuck in those corners so when you fold them there's less bulk there and then I will fold over the sides and then I go over it with my bone folder to make sure that it's adhered down very well and now you carefully want to fold up your book to get it ready to um, be able to bend so for the inside cover piece I'm cutting that to seven by two and a quarter That leaves me with a little bit of the border of that blue pattern paper. This is the Graphic 45 Gilded Lily collection. It's a beautiful collection. And now I'm going to add tape around the entire piece of my pattern paper, but you want to make sure no matter what that you have tape on the spine, the edge of the spine, and the edge of your front and back cover. That way when you're folding your book, it will not bubble out. Because if you don't have tape there, it will actually bubble the paper as you fold it up. I decided it needed a little bit of color to the edge of it, so I used some Tim Holtz Distress Ink and my mini ink blending tool and went around the edges of that inside piece. And then I folded it up and lightly went over it with my bone folder. So here, if I would have added the tape on right when I was making the hinge, it would have been easier, but I'm just adding a little bit of double-sided adhesive to the back, removing the backing, and now I'm just going to eyeball it and center it right in the middle of my spine. And there is my little mini album. I'm pressing down in the middle of all those to make sure it's adhered well. So now I'm going to cut out the tags to go inside those pockets. I'm cutting 12 of them because I want one tag for each of the pockets and then I'm, I decided to use those for the to decorate the back of the pages as well. So here are all 12. Now I'm just adding them to the pockets. This paper is just so beautiful. And now I'm using some wet adhesive to add the decorative piece to the back and that will hide my hinge piece. To this album, I added photos as well. I added, um, I still need to print out some more photos, but I did already add a couple and I cut them at one and three quarter inches square. This is another Marianne Designs die. This is an English rose, beautiful rolled flower, and also some leaf dyes. So I'm picking out some pattern paper from the 6x6 Gilded Lily collection, and I'm going to cut out three of these flowers here. This is the smaller of the two dies. And 
and I'm cutting out some leaves as well. I wasn't sure exactly which leaves I wanted to use, so I cut out a couple. So using this same tool from the Heartfelt Creations Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit, this is a flower curler. It's like a quilling tool almost. This makes it so easy. You just slip it in there and roll it around. It's that easy to do. So I did that with all three. I hold it tight for a minute and then I let it loosen up, add a little bit of glue to the middle, and then you do have to hold it. If you're not using hot glue, you have to hold it a little while to dry. Here I'm showing you, I accidentally ripped the paper. I was working with glue and I had a piece of paper stick to it by accident. When I pulled it off, it ripped the paper. So I'm just adding a little decorative piece from the same collection. And now just going to decorate the front of my album. I pulled out some tags that I had, some journaling tags from the World's Fair collection by Graphic 45. I didn't have the tags of the Gilded Lily, but I thought that these went well. That's what I love about Graphic 45. All their collections tend to go together. So I'm going to use this Inspire tag and one of these little round tags that come in it and glue that to it as well. And I will add that to the front with some Scotch Quick Dry. This is from the Gilded Lily Tags and Pockets collection. And I added that to the spine. It's perfect for the spine. That in that little bottle is also Scotch Quick Dry. It's just a fine tip applicator. So now I'm adding my rolled flowers and some glossy accents to the center and some little pearls, round pearls to the center of those little rolled flowers. They're so cute, so easy to make. And now I'm just going to again use some glossy accents, add a little white flower and also a glitter ball, which are my favorite to use on projects from Wild Orchid Crafts, again using some glossy accents. And that finishes off my little album. So again, I printed off a picture that I printed from the computer, but you can also get these made. This is one and three quarter inch square, and it fits perfectly either on the back of each page or in the pockets. I'm going to print out enough that I'm gonna put one in each pocket, also one to each back. And here I'm showing you, I have those tags that I cut out. I also added little tags from the Gilded Lily collection from their tags and pockets as well. So those are perfect to add dates to and journaling to as well. Or you could put your photos directly on that, but I didn't want to cover up that beautiful paper. So I'm just adding the photos to the pockets itself. And that's all there was to it, to this adorable little mini. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. You'll find all the links in the description box and you'll find all the measurements on Cut at Home's blog. Thanks so much for watching.